Hey everybody, we're going to get into uh, programming machines with change gears. It's how it was done before controllers. And these control, these gear reduction trains are used to control machine motion. In other words, you can use them to program a feed or a speed or a gear count or a helical angle, which is the example we'll use. And there is uh, one of the helical examples we're going to talk about. So let's get into it. It's a design. You need a design ratio. All machines vary. It's just a box of numbers. This one has a machine constant. Uh, it has the normal diametral pitch defined in this equation. The beta is the helix angle for the gear. And G on the de in the denominator is the number of hard starts. Your machine may have a different equation, but there's always a design ratio. And then the way you program the machine is you get four gears, A, B, C, and D, such that their ratio matches the design ratio. It's a really simple concept, but uh, these, these devices, if you're not familiar with them, uh, can be quite a bit of work. In this machine on the left, it shows the differential drive and gears A, B, C, and D. On the right, it shows the feed gears A, B, C, and D. A is always, the gear goes on the input shaft is A. It's on the same plane as B and B mesh, and then B and C are on the same shaft. And D is always the output shaft. So the machine ratio must match the design ratio. Again, a very, very simple concept. Seemingly easy. Normally, change gears come in with these machines somewhere between 20 and 80. So let's put some real numbers in here and get the ratio. Here it is. I put too many numbers in there. I'll get some comments on this probably. But the one way to solve it is with Machinery's Handbook. You can use continued fractions. This is a diagram real quick that uh, goes through how those numbers flow when you're chasing it down. You can look at the book and this might uh, this diagram might help you run your calculations or something. This is something you can put in Excel and get very close uh, approximations. But for our example in this uh, particular video, we're gonna use the Fowder change gear tables. Now this book was written in several editions, 1950, 1955, 1960, and probably 65. And they noted in the 1960 version that uh, that that one was actually checked by a computer. So the previous ones were calculated by hand. Also note that the ratios go from 0.1 to 1. And boastfully on the cover it says change gears are no longer calculated. But boy, when I go to gear shops and I look around, there's an awful lot of calculating going on. So let's break this down further. The change gear calculations certainly can be done easily with a home computer these days or even on your phone, but it's actually a very, very difficult problem to solve analytically. In other words, you write a, a, a nested do loop and you run through all the change gears one at a time and check against your main variable. And if it passes, it's a match. That brute force method is relatively easy to do and maybe in less than a minute, but in reality, it's an actually, they, there's no function to solve it directly. So it always takes compute time to solve the answer. So as you can see, there's over 12 million combinations. And the reason this one's difficult is you don't know which combinations match your ratio. They're very easy to check, and that's a quality of NP completeness, but very hard to find. So let's get back to our ratio. Here's what we calculated from the machine design. But it's over one, so we invert it to get its inversion. And there is a, a page out of the book starting with 0.713. So there's the first part of what you need to find, that, that little section in the book, and it shows A, B, C, and D. But uh, the next set is 0 0.680, triple O, 680. So you scroll down and get something that's very close, and we can get to 686. All right, so we're in the you know sixth digit of accuracy there, and there it shows the change gears. But that's the invert of change years, one over. So we, we turn it back into, uh, we just invert it again, and there's your change years. So now you go plug those into your machine and uh, go machine away to get, uh, get what you need to do. Now there's, for every set of change gears, there is there are four different ways you can put those in the machine to uh, make sure they fit in the cabinet, kind of a sequencing thing. So there's, there's more to it. As you can see, it gets uh, a little more detailed to make sure you can always cut what you need. 
But here's some uh, beautiful footage of the machine running and that big 15 degree helix angle gear getting cut. Thanks again, guys. A short one. Read the description below. It's got great stuff. Please subscribe. I appreciate everybody that's been watching. And this goes out to all the guys that have asked a lot of questions about this. Hope you appreciate it. See you.